Hey, good morning, everybody. Um, it is 12.01, so we're going to um, get started this morning. Thank you for being here. Um, my name is Stephanie Borett, and I'm the Director of Donor Relations for the Coastal Land Trust. I would love to thank you for joining us for being at the Little Lunch Lecture today. I do want to remind you um, and let anyone who is a first timer know we are recording the lecture today. So if you don't want your video to show up or if you have kids with you and you don't want your video to show up um, on a recording on Facebook um, and YouTube, then please turn your video off right now. Um, I will add a few links in the chat. Um, after a little bit to help us, um, if you would like to sign up for e-news, there will be a link to do that so you can get these reminders for the lecture um, weekly in your inbox instead of having to uh, uh, find it on the day of. Um, we will keep everybody on mute during the talk, but you can unmute at the end if you'd like to ask a question. Okay, so on to the good stuff. Our speaker today is Janice Allen. Janice has been working with the Coastal Land Trust since 1997, and she is responsible for advancing our efforts to protect top priority natural, scenic, and historic areas in the coastal plain of North Carolina. She is our Director of Land Protection. Janice, thank you so much for presenting today. We are looking forward to learning more about our priority focus in and around the Croatan National Forest. Thank you, Stephanie, and happy Friday to everybody. Um, I appreciate your joining us this afternoon as well. Um, I'm going to be discussing the Coastal Land Trust's efforts to conserve land in and around the Croatan National Forest and why we think this is important to do. Now, optimally, I would be giving this presentation to you in person while hiking out on the Croatan, but uh, we are stuck inside today. So I'm gonna do my best to show you how amazing this national forest is right in our backyard. So in an April 2020 news article, the US Forest Service reported record visitation on national forests across the country during this COVID-19 crisis. And while some of our national forests and parks are temporarily closed, Due to social distancing requirements, many of us are finding relief from the stress and confinement of this situation by spending more time outdoors to get a literal breath of fresh air. And even before the pandemic, Americans, especially in the last few years, have been visiting and enjoying our public lands at record numbers. And the Croatan is no exception. Just as some background, President Franklin Roosevelt designated 77,000 acres in our mid-coast as the Croatan National Forest back in July of 1936. This was right after the Great Depression, and the landscape of the mid-coast looked a lot different back then. It was probably less forested because we had just gotten done with a timber boom. In fact, the Croatan was originally established for reforestation experiments. And today, at 160,000 acres, the forest is still used uh, for forest management and for recreation, and it is one of our country's natural treasures. Make no mistake, the Croatan is impressive. And many scientists consider it to be an ecological gem. And part of the reason for this is that it's got a diversity of habitats. In fact, it's pretty much got each of the different habitats that you could find in the coastal plain of North Carolina here on the Croatan. It has everything from Pocosin wetlands, bottomland hardwood, cypress gum swamp, non riverine swamp forest. It's got uh, upland hardwood forest, maritime forest, longleaf forest, and lime sink ponds. In fact, our natural heritage program, ecologists, consider the Croatan National Forest to be ecologically significant at the national level, that is, compared to other sites in the country. In fact, they refer to it as a nationally significant mega site because it's got so many natural areas embedded within it. 
Well, I would like to show you some of the natural beauty of the Croatan as viewed by Marty Pitcairn. Now, Marty is a Newburn resident and she's done a lot of exploring through the Croatan and she's taken some phenomenal pictures along the way, including this shot right here. This is a picture of a recently burned pine stand that has come back in a carpet of bracken fern. She calls it the fernscape. Now Marty likes to get close to the ground because often she can find beauty on an elfin scale, like these pictures of orchids that she has taken. The Osceola's plume, rosebud orchid, and pale grass pink. And Marty loves to take pictures of our, some of our carnivorous plants, like the Venus flytraps and yellow pitcher plants seen here. For those of you that aren't familiar with uh, carnivorous plants, they have adaptations to allow them to survive in very nutrient poor soils. They basically have modified leaves that allow them to capture insects and they can absorb the nutrients from those insects. So they are the meat eaters of the plant world. Well, Marty has captured the essence of the Croatan as a land greatly influenced by water. It's got frontage on the Neuse River, on the Newport River, on Bryce's Creek, and on the White Oak River. 75% of the Croatan is wetlands. And so it is helping to absorb floodwaters. It's dotted with natural ponds. It also has some managed or man-made impoundments that are important for shorebirds and waterfowl. In fact, this diversity of habitats provides for an abundant game and non-game wildlife species or non-hunted wildlife species. It's got American alligators, yellow belly sliders, turtles, it's got black bears, beautiful painted bunnings, and a lot of different bat species like the northern long-eared bat, which has recently become a federally listed threatened species. So whether you like to hike, bird watch, botanize, take photos, canoe, kayak, or hunt, the Croatan National Forest has something to offer you. And it's our land to enjoy. But believe it or not, we still need to help protect the ecological integrity of this forest. And let me explain. Well, I mentioned that the Croatan is very large. Gosh, it's 160,000 acres, but it's not all contained within one contiguous block. In fact, around the periphery, there's many separate parcels of the forest. And we know that there's both small and large roads and power lines that bisect it that create many small blocks or patches of forest. And these smaller patches equate to more edge habitat. An edge habitat is not necessarily good. It's the transition zone between forested and non-forested areas. Edge can actually allow non-native or invasive plants and wildlife to encroach into the forest and wreak havoc. And in some cases, these smaller uh, patches of forest give a leg up to some of our native predators. For example, raccoons can enter a smaller patch of woods and uh, can prey on many of our sensitive songbird species while they're trying to nest. And many of our wildlife species actually prefer intact forest patches, like the wood thrush and red cockaded woodpecker. Well, I was talking to uh, the Croatan District Ranger a few weeks ago, and he was lamenting uh, this problem of fragmentation of the Croatan. And he said, it's like death by a thousand cuts. And as our human population on the coast increases, we've got more homes and businesses built right up against the forest, creating what we call more urban wildland interface. Again, this is a transition zone between where homes and businesses are meeting wildland vegetation. And why is this a problem? Well, this can put a squeeze 
on local wildlife that's trying to move from one place to another. They might have to cross a major highway or a parking lot, making them more vulnerable. But it also makes it harder for the U.S. Forest Service to conduct some of their much needed management activities, like prescribed burning, because of the increased smoke and escape fire concerns. Now, the Croatan is going to burn whether we do it in a controlled fashion, like you see in the photo here, or <laughs> if it's a wildfire and it and gets lit either by lightning strike or maybe even arson. This is the scene we don't want. We don't want fire right up against people's homes or businesses. So for those of us that live in the mid coast, we are all probably very familiar with the North Carolina Department of Transportation's plans to upgrade Highway 70 to interstate status. In fact, some of us may have even experienced some of the road work going on. Well, what you probably didn't know is that back in April of 2018, uh, the Coastal Land Trust actually received $7.3 million <laughs> from uh, a settlement from litigation brought against DOT by the Sierra Club over the proposed U.S. bypass around Havelock that would actually cut through a portion of the Croatian. That bypass would impact directly 264 acres with its footprint, but it would also isolate another thousand acres of the Croatian, making it more difficult for the Forest Service to burn it. So the settlement will allow the bypass to go forward, but it set up these funds for the Coastal Land Trust to use to conserve land in and around the Croatan. Now to say that the Coastal Land Trust was excited <laughs> about receiving these funds is an understatement. I would describe our reaction as giddy. Never before have we had funds in hand to go out and conserve special places. Our traditional land conservation or business model has always been we got to first raise the money and sometimes it takes us one to two years before we can close on a project. So this is different and exciting. So let me tell you what we've been doing so far with these settlement funds. Well back in November of 2018 we purchased 113 acres from Talton Enterprises which lies adjacent to our 255 acre Gales Creek Preserve in Carteret County. This is a beautiful longleaf pine forest tract and it's got over a mile of frontage on Gales Creek, which is a tidal creek that flows into Bogue Sound. This tract was actually on our top 40 list of sites that we felt were particularly threatened by development and were very ecologically important. Here's a picture of the Talton Tract along Gales Creek. It is lovely. And here's a map showing you this Talton Tract in red, adjacent to our Gales Creek Preserve, which is in orange, which is adjacent to the Croatan, which is in green. And so you can see it's connected, and it is located right north of Highway 24. In May of 2019, we purchased 182 acres from the Davis Family Limited Partnership. That tract is surrounded on three sides by the Croatan and is in Craven County. It's got some nice pine forest. It has bottomland hardwoods along Black Creek, which is a tributary of the Trent River. And we plan to transfer this property to the U.S. Forest Service to become part of the Croatan National Forest. In this map, you can see the little Davis tract in red. It's surrounded by the Croatan, just south of New Bern. Probably our most exciting acquisition, though, happened in August of 2019, where we purchased 247 acres of land from Bear Land and Timber LLC that lies adjacent to the U.S. Forest Service's Island Creek Forest Walk Trail in Jones County. Essentially, it protects 
the view shed of that trail for 2.4 miles along Island Creek. This is a very special property. In technical terms, it's got a forest that's called a basic mesic forest. And what that is, is it's a forest predominantly of hardwoods, and the hardwoods are old, it's, it's an old growth forest, but it has soils that are um, moist, they're rich, and they have a high pH, that's the basic. And the reason for that is because of the special marl geology that occurs at this site. And you can see in this photo of the marl rock that occurs along Island Creek. And marl is just a rock that's comprised of um, clay and limestone with fossilized seashells. And apparently, Island Creek has the most outcropping of marl anywhere in the state. And the weathering of that marl leads to a higher pH in the soil, which is very unusual in the coastal plain. We have a lot of acidic soils. So we got lots of rare plants with the old growth hardwoods. We've got a diversity of songbirds. And the Heritage Program has identified this site as nationally significant. And this site was at the top of our top 40 list. So we were very glad to get it. Again, I mentioned all those rare plants. One of the rare plants is a fern called the Carolina spleenwort that loves to grow on that marl. Well, a UNC Chapel Hill uh, master's student did a botanical inventory of the Island Creek area and, and tallied over 600 different plant species living there. And the interesting thing about this is that over 50% of the plants that he tallied usually live or are found in the Piedmont or the mountains, not in the coastal plain. So this is a very unusual site. And here's a map of the Island Creek tract. Um, we are gonna retain this as a nature preserve, and you can see it's located right next to a portion of the Croatan, south of New Bern. In March of 2020, we purchased 350 acres of land from Bait Land Company. This is also surrounded on three sides by the Croatan in Craven County. The property consists mostly of Loblolly pine forest. It's dotted with these ephemeral ponds, which are quite beautiful. And we hope to transfer this tract to the U.S. Forest Service. Now, right adjacent to the Bait Tract on the Croatan National Forest, there are several clusters of breeding red cockaded woodpeckers, which is a federally endangered species. Now, this is our only North American woodpecker that will construct a cavity in a live pine tree. So they've gotta be old and they're often, um, uh, they've often got red heart fungus, which makes, them, makes it easier for them to drill their cavities. But if you look in this photo, if you look in, in the background, you can see white dots. Well, that's actually trees that have been marked by the U.S. Forest Service biologists as having a red cockaded woodpecker cavity. Well, the fact that this breeding group or groups are right adjacent to the bait tract is a good thing because they probably use that bait tract as foraging habitat. And here's a map showing the bait tract in red, surrounded by the Croatan. It is accessed off County Line Road and Little Road just south of New Bern. And finally, we bought in March of 2020, 568 acres from Bern Land and Timber LLC, again adjacent to the Croatan in Craven County. This tract is really scenic. It's got some beautiful pine hardwood forest, longleaf forest. It's got both man-made and natural ponds on it. And this is a, a shot of one of the man-made ponds. We're going to retain this property for a while and manage it as a nature preserve, and we'll probably be trying to enhance the longleaf pine forest through prescribed burning. And this is a map showing you that burn land and timber tract in red, adjacent to a portion of the Croatan in green, south of New Bern. And that tract is accessed off Perrytown Loop Road. Well, to summarize, in just two years, the Coastal Land Trust has acquired five outstanding properties. 
totaling over 1,400 acres adjacent to the Croatan National Forest. And we have strategically leveraged or matched the settlement funds whenever we could with other private, federal, and state dollars. So we've got more money that we're gonna be spending to protect more land around the Croatan. And we have some deals that we're working on. So we hope you will stay tuned and keep up with our website to see more about our Croatan Protection Initiative. And I think that the Sierra Club folks are happy with us, what we've done with the settlement funds to date. Cassie Gavin, the Senior Director of Government Affairs in Raleigh said that the Sierra Club members from the mountains to the sea, especially those in the Croatan group, are pleased to see so many unique properties conserved around the Croatan in such a short time period. We're excited to see the conservation efforts continue and we will be working. So thank you so much and I would be happy to try to answer any questions if uh, can, uh, Stephanie can help me <laughs> do that. Thank you. Thank you, Janice. That, what an awesome um, overview of all of the lands that we've saved recently. It, it's really awesome to see the plugging of the holes that you described. Absolutely. It's just, that's just really cool to see it that way. I haven't even seen it that way. So I'm super glad um, that you got to present today. I will encourage anyone who has a question to unmute your microphone and ask it at this time. We'll give you a couple minutes to do that. All right. Did Janice do such a great job that <laughs> all our curiosity that was piqued has been satisfied? <laughs> well, they can always email me. My email uh, is right there or give me a call. Yeah. Um, I'd be happy to answer any questions or talk to anybody about this effort. We're very um, thankful for receiving these settlement funds. I would like to say something. Hey, Joe. Ahead, hey, Jeff. Janice. You're hanging in there, boy. I tell you, <laughs> 1997, and uh, you were doing it back then, and you're still doing it. Great, wonderful, great job. Thanks, Joe. We have got a great team here. We really support each other, and, and each of us is a very important part. Yep. This is Julie Moore. Can you all hear me? Hey, yeah, Julie. Yeah. Well, it's so exciting to see all these properties, particularly these inholdings. I've worried about them for years, uh, even after I left North Carolina, that it makes burning so difficult in general management. So to target these areas is really so important because uh, if not, you really end up losing more of your things you're trying to protect if you have neighbors who, who you can't work with for various reasons. So I think it's impor really important. And I, when I'm down and visiting in uh, this spring, right as things were starting with our shutdown business, I went to um, the road that goes to Camp Sam Hatcher. I've forgotten the name. Yes, of that. Sam and, Hatcher Road. Well, that's why I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> I've, been, I've been visiting that site since 1973. Uh, wow. In classes for the North Carolina Botanical Garden. Anyway, it's a good place to see fly traps and uh, see the woodpeckers and Absolutely. all those things. And uh, but I was so distressed to find out what the hunters had done in there. I caught, counted 17 deer carcasses thrown on the edge oh between the Pocosin, and many of them uh, it's from a little earlier, but evidently they'd been encamped and tearing up uh, the ground in that area also. And I should have reported it when I got home, but then other things happened. And then last fall, there were actually people camping in there and doing all kinds of strange things. I'm afraid that that area has become too accessible and I was wondering if you could advise me on how to make comments to the Forest Service to, that's such a, a viable, that's such a valuable and viable area as we don't need to, to have it impacted by activities that could go on elsewhere. I, I totally agree, Julie. I think um, one of the issues that the Croatan has is they have literally one enforcement officer. Hmm. And I think if you would like to make comments, I would go directly 
to the state supervisor's office in Asheville. Because okay. I think the Croatan sometimes is the redheaded stepchild of the forest in North Carolina, and they don't get the attention they need. So I would either go directly to the state supervisor's office or even the regional office in Atlanta and let them know. Because I agree with you. I think they need more enforcement officers out on the ground, not only to start you know, those type of activities, but also dumping. Yes, and I've forgotten that they, actually they were shooting that day. I was there in the fall and that was unnerving because I was trying to show some people some of the phenomenal diversity and how fire was interacting in that area and the woodpeckers were overhead. So yeah. I will make those comments because um, they do well, they, they did, need more help. And, and they did hire a wonderful botanist, um, yes, Andy know. Walker, so that's good. <laughs> and Island Creek is so exciting to me too and how unusual it is. It is. So I was glad to see the emphasis there with the marl uh, and um, such a strange place. It, really, it is. It, it absolutely is. More like the Piedmontan Mountains. So I, I'm very impressed and I really love the Croatan as so many people from elsewhere call it the Croatian National Forest. <laughs> well, thank you, Julie. Janice, there are a couple of questions that came in on the chat. Um, okay. Pro was wondering what is the current status of Lake Ellis Simon private old in holding within the Croatan, and he comments that it's a nationally significant natural area in its own right, and was curious about that. Yes, that is um, still privately owned, and um, you know, pretty much it's it's a big hunt club, um, you know, that uses it. So I think as far as threat, um, you know, it's not threatened, but we have not been successful in in kind of making inroads with them. We've we've tried a couple times, but we'll we'll. It's definitely on our radar. So if we can get to the right people um, and make the right pitch, because you're absolutely right, those are important areas. Um, and uh, you know they should be in long-term conservation because they are like holes in the donut right there. But I do think right now, you know, they're... Janice, you have kind of blipped out for a minute. Um, I'm having trouble hearing some. Stephanie, we're not hearing you, but this is Camilla. There is one other question in the chat, Janice, okay. that I can come to you. Okay. The question comes from Jerry about what about the effects of water being pumped out of the forest on the plant communities? Janice, you're on mute. Janice, you're on mute. There we go. Thank can you, you hear me now? Yes, ma'am. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, so I guess I'm not familiar with water being pumped out of the forest. Um, I guess I would need some more information on that um, because that's not, obviously that's not a good thing. Uh, the forest has got wetlands to absorb, you know, water. Um, but I'm sure with development up against it, people don't want water on their lawn. My internet is bad. Not lately. Okay. I'm sorry, I couldn't answer that question. That might be something directly for the Forest Service. I'll have to ask them the next time I see them, the folks over there. And Julie, I did want to mention too that we are working directly with the Croatan uh, District Ranger and, and his staff on these acquisitions. So they have had input into this as well. That's wonderful. We have one more question. Um, okay. Ken Moore would like to ask. And I think he's going to unmute his mic and ask it. If he's still on. Nope. Well, can, can you hear me? This is Ken. Go ahead. Okay. 
her about and still about the various concerns that can you give us some specific guidelines on how just citizens or members like myself or the I've, e I've, I've already taken it <laughs> perfect then i will respond to you directly one thing i will say is that the new district uh ranger ron hudson appears to be you know very gung-ho um he needs support and so i i all often you know get concerned about going over his head um but I think I would bring him into it, um, let him know it's a problem and say that, you know, we're trying to get you help by going to the state supervisor's office. And I think that will be more well received by, you know, the, the, the district there um, than if somebody just complains, you know, to above them. So I, I've been working directly with Ron, you know, on this Croatan Protection Initiative. So I would be happy to talk to you further about the best ways to try to get, you know, some help to the yeah. Croatan. Because okay, I really well, think that's what it is. Yeah. Well, thank you. That's helpful. And I'll, I'll contact you early next week. I'll give you Perfect. some time. So, and, and the other thing is anything that can be done to get other, as many people as possible involved. I don't know if it's effective, if there are more numbers of citizens responding to something like this i mean i think there would be but i think you're absolutely yeah. right ken the more that they hear from i think that's why the mountain national forests get so much attention because there's so Strong music and show support, um, and also say, you know, we want things done. We want we want more resources to the crow team. Well, would, so yes, the more the better. Would the land trust get in trouble if you uh, describe this need for individual uh, re responses in your uh, various updates to your membership? Well, that, I mean. That way, I there are a lot of people who may not a lot of people may not even be aware of this and you don't have they're not well they're uh you don't have all of your membership in uh listening in today and they it's too right. bad but i mean everybody's got a busy schedule but i'm just getting the word out to as many people um is i think really really important to be effective yeah and ken i think there's two issues you know as far as getting the word out on the work we're doing the land conservation yeah we're trying to do that more and more not just with this presentation but we also have um our next newsletter that will have you know information on this um you know we're getting press releases out so you know we'll we'll try to keep getting the word out on our work as far as concerns about the croatan i think that's best done you know through individual citizens i can provide you guidance as to who you know, to contact and kind of the approach. Um, but also the Sierra Club, um, you know, they've got the Croatan group. In fact, I'm going to be speaking to them about our work next Tuesday at their meeting. So the Sierra Club, the Croatan group would be an excellent one to be a part of because they have been a voice. They are the reason that we have these settlement funds to do work there. So I, I think that's a great, and they're an advocacy group specifically. Right. Okay, so, so, it sound, so it sounds like what you're suggesting is that I can be more effective to support what you folks are already uh, doing um, above and beyond by just interacting with every one of my personal friends, my contacts, you know, who go out and walk in the woods with me, just make sure that they all know about this and sort of, <laughs> urge them with specific information what they can do absolutely can i mean we okay. we love to have more members support our land conservation work yeah. i mean this is this is what pays the bills you know the settlement funds are buying the land you as a member are helping pay you know for us to do this work yeah so it's very important and then we work with groups like sierra club 
you know, it, it, when they have situations like this where they went after DOT, um, you know, about the bypass, and we happen to be the recipients because we have a good track record of land conservation. But they're the ones out there, you know, advocating for, you know, less harm to the forest. Thank you, and fabulous job, all of you folks. Well, thank you, Ken. All right, well, this is Jessica, and I don't see any more questions in the chat, so I want to take the time to thank Janice for this lovely presentation. It was so incredible to take a, a little peek of the forest and learn more about what the Land Trust is doing to protect it. And I want to thank again all of you for attending this little lunch lecture. Uh, we do have some more coming up on schedule. June 5th is Sarah Crate with the Longleaf Alliance, and she'll be talking on their work in conservation partnerships as well as June 12th, it's Bland and Ann Simpson, and they're going to lead you through a little photographic and literary tour of Little Rivers and Waterway Tales. So if you like the little lunch lectures, please continue to join us, but you can also support the Coastal Land Trust for more great programs at www.coastallandtrust.org slash donate. And we look forward to seeing you again next week. And if uh, you really wanted to share this with people that couldn't make it, feel free to let them know that this recording will be posted. And it was live on Facebook and on our Coastal Land Trust Facebook and our Springers Point Facebook pages. So thanks so much for coming, everyone. We appreciate it. Bye. Bye. <laughs>